Welcome to the Capital OTB Stakes Preview for the weekend of March 10th, 2018. Sully Crotty and Mike Callahan. How are you, Mike? What's going on, Sully? Big weekend coming up. Absolutely. A ginormous weekend all around the country. Uh, we're going to start in New York with the Gotham. It's race number 10 at Aqueduct. A nice 10 race card at Aqueduct. Um, this, the Gotham is a grade 3 event. $300,000 going a mile. Then we go down to South Florida, Tampa Bay. Uh, it's the Tampa Bay. It's the South Tampa Bay Derby, a Grade Two event, going a mile and a sixteenth for four hundred thousand dollars. A very nice field down at Tampa Bay Downs. Then we go across the country to Santa Anita. Race number four at Santa Anita is a Grade One event, four hundred thousand dollars, going seven furlongs on the main track. Race number five at Santa Anita is a mile on the grass. It is the Frank E. Kilmore. It's a grade one event for $400,000. Then we go to race number six. It's the San Felipe, a grade two event. It is a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Uh, this is a very uh, loaded field, very interesting field. We'll get more to that as the program goes on. And we'll close out with the San Anita Handicap, a grade one event, going a mile and a fourth on the main track for $600,000. All right, we got a lot to kick off. Normally we do five stakes races, but because the weekend is so huge uh, with a lot of grade ones at San Anita, we wanted to incorporate everything. So we got six to talk about, starting out with the Gotham, the grade three event, like Sully said, going a mile, $300,000 is a purse. A nice field of nine in here. A couple that were dual entered in the South uh, Tampa Bay Derby. They are going to be showing up here in the Gotham. We'll start out in numerical order with number one dial operator going out for Jason's service. Trevor McCarthy is aboard 10 to 1 on the morning line. A horse that broke the maiden back in July of 2017 very impressively. That was going five furlongs at Mammoth. That wasn't seen for a little bit. Showed up on February 4th of this year, sprinting again at the five and a half distance. That was in a one other than optional claimer. One off the pace, going away by four and a half. Stretches out and steps up. Real big class test for this horse, but I think being on a dialed in, dialed in love to go long distances. If you remember that horse uh, winning the Florida Derby uh, back in his time, I think this horse is going to like to stretch out. I think as a player, 10 to 1, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think it's a big player for Jason Service. He's had a nice barn. He's got a couple nice entries throughout the car. And then, of course, he's got Forense Fire in the in this field. But I think this is a very interesting play, as you said. Just keeps improving every race. Uh, and I really was impressed last time out going to the optional claimer, winning at a nice 4-1 to price. Definitely an interesting horse at 10-1. to one. Number two is Cove Blue going out for Dale Romans. Chris Landeros aboard, 30-1 to one on the morning line. Two back, broke the maiden at Gulfstream, going seven furlongs. Last time out, stepped up against winners for the first time in that optional claimer. Finished third, beating a distant nine lengths to Storm Runner in Mississippi. Who are two decent horses uh, on the Derby Trail as well. But the horse has been working out pretty sharp. But to me, the pace and race dynamics are a little bit against this horse, the number two, Cove Blue. Yeah, I think it's you know just a little bit underneath. We saw Storm Runner last weekend at the Fountain of Youth. Ran an okay race there, Mississippi, you know, always is it always in a race when that horse is entered. But I, I agree. I think it's just a step under for Dale Roman. Number three is Beautiful Shot going out for Keith DeSormo, Angel Arroyo aboard. An interesting horse shipping over from the California circuit here to Aqueduct. Last time out, finished third, beating a distant nine lengths to Gray Vitos and Moreno. And we saw Moreno run at Oakland, win impressively two back, uh, was the beaten favorite last time out at Oakland and Gray Vitos is a very nice horse. Two and three back, the horse uh, broke the maiden very impressively, won a stakes race at Santa Anita as well. I think this horse is an interesting player switching from the California circuit to the Naira circuit. Yeah, whenever you get the California horses coming in, they're, they're here for a reason, they're here to win. We see it all the time here in the Naira circuit. Um, but as you said, race against some quality horses, Moreno twice. Uh, and actually beat Moreno, so I th think it's a very interesting horse. Angel's a very aggressive rider at this one turn mile distance. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Beautiful Shot. Number four is where she told me to go. Going out for Anthony Pecorero, 15 to 1 on the morning line. You get Joe Racco Jr. aboard. Last time out, raced down at Gulfstream Park, going seven furlongs. Won that stakes very impressively from off the pace, winning going away by six and a half. 
has faced the likes of Mask, finished his fourth to Mask in the Mucho Macho Man at Gulfstream and finished second beating the neck to a nice horse in Val Harbor who we've talked about a couple times in the stakes preview. I think this horse is just a touch below uh, the tops in here and that's why you're getting the 15 to 1. Maybe a possibility for exotics? Yeah, I think definitely a possibility for exotics. You know, you just never know what you're going to get with, with this horse. And horse either is going to look really impressive like we saw last time out or it's going to race against horses that are significantly better and run a distant fourth. Now, it has raced against some quality horses. Like you said, Bal Harbor showed up big that day at 14 to 1 down in South Florida. But uh, I definitely think, definitely not out of the question, this horse uh, to fill out some exotics. Number five is Forenze Fire. Going out for Jason's service, you get Manny Franco aboard. Five to two, second choice on this Gotham race. And last time out, finished second, being two to Avery Island, a horse I know you like. Uh, also beat Marconi, uh, who went on to race last weekend as well. Two back, won the Jerome, very impressively. Didn't get much pace to run into that day and was still able to close on a nice horse in seven trumpets. And again, we've talked about it before because we've talked about Frenzy Fire. Uh, it, was, it was kind of a... An odd one to run in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile when the horse finished 7th by 20, but this horse has run really good races time and time again. Actually beat Free Drop, uh, free drop Billy excuse me, back in July in the Sanford. So I think this horse shows up all the time. I think it's going to be another one where just sitting right off of the pace, I think the 5 is a huge player in here in Frenzy Fire. Yeah, and you know, if you get 5-2 to two on this horse, that's, that's a gift all day long. I think you know, from the morning line, and I, I think the betting public is just going to keep a little bit of an eye on Free Drop Billy. Uh, so I think this horse is going to sit right around that price, and it's definitely an interesting price, definitely a great price for this horse. But I think we're going to get some pace today, and that's with Frenzy Fire. That's when he runs his best. Number six is Free Drop Billy, the nine to five morning line favorite, going off for Dale Romans. You get Dylan Davis aboard. Last time out, faced Audible, who up to this point, and I went on record saying it. I think Audible's run the best derby prep up to this point, uh, so I think Free Drop Billy uh, deserves a lot of credit with that second beating five and a half to Audible, but was also seven and three quarters clear of Tiz Mischief, who's going to run in the Tampa Bay Derby, and we'll touch upon it a little bit later. I thought that was a solid performance, got a 90 buyer. Horse kind of ran a dud in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but off that last performance, I think is eligible to improve. The only real question is, was Scratch out of the Fountain of Youth last weekend, finds this spot here do you think that's going to be anything to worry about in this spot no i i don't think so you know i like i picked the horse on top and found you at the scratch obviously it was uh for a good reason to to enter a different derby prep race and i think the horse fits in nicely here you have the leading jockey dylan davis uh aboard for dale rollins you have everyone all the connections obviously like this horse um and i really like the horse in Saratoga twice this summer went off as a lukewarm favorite and raced against some quality horses went to the Breeders Cup so I, I think it's going to be tough to beat this horse number seven is old time revival going out for Ken Decker 15 to 1 on the morning line last time out took the lead going to mile uh, distance at Laurel Park just got caught finishing second beating a neck at huge odds the works on this horse have been absolutely tremendous bullet works time and time again Horse is going to go to the lead, but I think it's going to find some pace uh, pace presence with some other horses in here, uh, notably the two Cove Blue and the number 8-9 route who we haven't talked about yet. I think the horse is just going to try one thing only, try to go out and wire them. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, uh, but nonetheless, maybe an exotic play. Yeah, definitely going, to, definitely going to try to wire the field. There's too much pace in here for that to happen. Um, but coming in from Laurel Park, the horse really has improved, and you said those bullet workouts – stand out amongst the rest of this field so uh, I, I don't think it's impossible for the horse to hang out for fourth but I think but there's, there is other speed in this race it's just going to be tough for this horse to win. Number eight is nine route going out for Jeremiah Anglehart. Kendra Carmusha board 30 to one on the morning line. Horse searching for four in a row. Broke the main and three back very impressively. Faced winners for the first time two back uh, and one other than an optional claimer against State Breads won that. And then last time out ran in a stakes against two nice horses in Empire Line and Gio Dioro and won that race going clear by three lengths. Another one that I think is going to be a pace presence with the seven. Big class test for this horse, but again, searching for four in a row. This horse is in razor sharp form. Yeah, and the searching for four in a row, that's obviously a plus for the horse, but the one thing that was impressive last time out really slowed down that pace, was on the lead, slowed it down in the slop. If it does that again, 
you know, definitely Kendrick Carmouche is up with a lot of speed for this horse, so we'll see what happens. But I think there's just too much other speed here. Definitely an interesting horse going for four in a row and, and a huge test today getting out getting getting away from the state reds. Number nine is enticed going out for Kieran McLaughlin. You get Junior Alvarado board seven to two on the morning line. Last time out raced in the Holy Bowl against the likes of Audible and Free Drop Billy, who we touched upon a little bit earlier. Finished fourth, beating 14 that day. Obviously, audible. It was all audible that day in the Holy Bull. Uh, free drop, Billy, a distant or a distant second, but clear from third and fourth. And watching the race again, I just thought Entice was very flat in that race. I know the horse two back was able to win the Kentucky Jockey Club Grade Two event, getting up to win by a head, beating Tiz Mischief, who I talked about, and also Promises Fulfilled, who went on to win last weekend in the Fountain of Youth. So. Uh, it's just one of those situations where I'm a little concerned off that last performance. I'll kind of use a wait and see approach, but the fact that this horse is reunited with Junior Alvarado is obviously a plus. Definitely a big plus, and this horse, as you said, you pointed out, beat promises fulfilled. It's raced against Free Job Billy, it's raced against Audible. Uh, so I think Entice, you know, the connections are nice. Kieran and Godolphin, Junior Alvarado's back in the iron, so. We'll see what happens, but I agree. It's just the last performance is a little iffy for me. It was a big-time favor and didn't really do any running down in Florida. All right, pick time here in the grade three Gotham. I, I went free job, Billy. I, I stuck with him last week. Uh, I'm going to stick with him here. I like the way Dylan's riding. Dale took him out of the Fountain Youth for a reason. Uh, he, I think it's going to be tough to beat. And then I have Forenze Fire underneath. I think Dial Operator is a big play as well, 10-1 to 1 for Jason Service. So... Uh, I have six, five, and one, and then a long shot in here. A nine route, maybe to hang on uh, the eight horse with Kendra Carmouche for some super factors. Yeah, I, I like free drop Billy in here as well. I think nine to five is very fair. If this horse runs anywhere close to that last race, towers as far as buyer uh, buyer figures go over anybody in this field. I think he's a logical horse to like on top. Underneath, Frenze Fire, time and time again, just runs gutsy efforts. Last time out of second to Avery Island, two back, was able to get up and win that race with no pace at all. And I thought that was a terrific effort in the Jerome. I think the five, Frenze Fire is another player. And then also, number three, beautiful shot. Uh, Keith DeSormo, I think, found a much softer spot than the San Felipe, which uh, he could have obviously put that horse in as well. He ships this horse east and... Uh, I think this horse will be able to come from just off the pace, has faced the likes of a couple nice horses in Grey Vitos and Marino, and 8-1 uh, to one is a generous price, and also your horse that you talked about, Dial Operator, is my long shot. Two for two so far, stretching out, I don't think should be a concern out of Dialed in, another play in here at 10-1. to one. All right, those were our thoughts in the Grade 3 Gotham coming up at Aqueduct on Saturday. We'll take a look at the featured on Saturday at Tampa Bay now. It's the Grade 2 South Tampa Bay Derby going a mile 16th grade two event $400,000 is a purse and again this is another terrific field interesting to see where you're going to go on this we'll start out with number one a Zary like move 50 to 1 on the morning line you get Scott Spieth aboard blinkers go on on Saturday last time out was a real non-effort finishing seventh beating 23 and three quarters to world of trouble who ran outstanding in that race, and we'll touch upon a little bit later. Uh, probably a horse you like in your mix, and I took a look at it as well. Uh, but off that last performance, is going to have to improve dramatically. Best finish so far uh, was that main breaker at Delaware, finishing first, beaten two. And really, the, the second place performances were really distant second place performances. There's going to need a lot to go right just to get in the money for the number one is area like move. Yeah, definitely needs a lot to go right here. They throw the blinkers on for the first time. Maybe that'll help. First time blinker winning at a 50% clip. So um, definitely, definitely needs a lot to go right here. But as you said, roll to trouble. That was just a really good race there. My, that was a nice stakes race at the track. So. Uh, oh, maybe just a little bit of experience at the track. Maybe this horse uh, can hang on, but it's a lot really does need to go right for the one. Number two is Tiz Mischief. Going off for Dale Romans, you get Joel Rosario aboard. Eight to one on the morning line. The last time out, finished third, beating 13 and a quarter. Two audible and behind Free Job Billy, who we talked about in the Gotham. Thought that was an okay performance. Did hold off um, a couple in there to finish third. And I, I thought it was... Good off of the layoff because the horse hadn't been seen since November 25th when the horse raced at Churchill Downs in that grade two event. Finished second being ahead to Enticed, who we talked about in the Gotham as well, but it was in front of Promises Fulfilled, who we saw 
run really big race last weekend to win the Fountain of Youth. So I think it's an interesting play. I think the horse can revert back to some form. I think second off the layoff will help this horse, and 8-1 to one is very intriguing. Definitely an interesting price here for this horse. I definitely think it's a horse that can make some noise in here. You get Joel Rosario to come across state to, to ride this horse, and uh, Dale's done a great job. And as you said, the two and three back, those are impressive wins there. A nice closing effort in the maiden, the break to maiden at Keeneland uh, against Slot, who's had an unbelievable uh, pr uh, racing season championship meet at Gulfstream Park. Has a couple wins, should have three. Uh, and two back in, in the in the grade two at Churchill Downs. That was a loaded field, as you can see, and a really nice effort to get back in the race in, from 10th place. Number three is Vino Rosso going out for Todd Pletcher. You get Johnny V aboard. Four to one on the morning line. Blinkers go on for this horse. First time blinkers. Definitely know that for Reno Rosso. Last time raced in the Sam F. Davis, the grade three event down at Tampa Bay against Flame Away and Catholic Boy. Finished third, beating a length and a quarter. But what's closing on them? To me, watching that race, and I was a Vino Rosso fan and still am, just looked a little lost. So I think Todd Pletcher is doing exactly the right thing in here to put blinkers on. I think it'll focus the horse. I think it'll be a little bit more aggressive coming down the stretch. And if he runs back to those first two races, this horse is going to be a serious player out of Curlin, a $410,000 purchase. I don't think we've seen the best out of number three, Vino Rosa. Yeah, and it's one of those horses I have in the mix, and I, I agree. I think throwing the blinkers on, it's a huge play, and Todd's excellent first-time blinkers. He has as many horses as you can want as a trainer, and he's winning 29% of his first-time blinkers, which is just an unbelievable stat for him. Um, so I, I agree. I think throwing the blinkers on is the right play here. Uh, I would like to see the horse a little bit more forwardly placed, like we saw the first start and two back. Uh, but that was a tough field of horse racing against the Tampa Bay last time, so uh, I think it's a big play. Yeah, and you, you had me note something, too, because if you just look at the trainer stats on Todd Pletcher so far at Tampa Bay, it is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He's run 13 horses down at Tampa Bay. Seven of them have won. Yeah. So it's a 54% winning percentage. And then the other six that have lost finished second or third. Yeah. So whether you like Todd Pletcher or you don't, he's been sending horses here that are running. And I think Vino Rosso is definitely eligible as a win candidate uh, to get the job done. Number four is Grandpa Knows Best going out for Ken McPeak. 31 on the morning line. Julian LaPeru aboard. A winner of the last two. Broke the maiden two back at Churchill Downs. Then raced against winners for the first time, winning in one other than an optional claimer at Churchill. That was back in November, though. The horse is off of a long layoff. Again, if the horse can repeat those last two races, maybe an exotics possibility, but I think the, the layoff is going to be a huge concern. Yeah, I think the layoff is a concern, but the horse has been working okay. You got a nice bullet in February there. and Yeah, I, to, I think he needs to run the exact same race we saw two and la two races back and last time out to get a piece. I think just a touch below this field, um, but definitely a horse that is a future stakes race. I think it's just it's a tough three-year-old class. This horse will be okay, but I think today... Uh, in the Tampa Bay Derby, I think it's just a little touch below. Number five is Flame Away going up for Mark Cassie and Jose Lascano. And I've nicknamed this horse the Fighter because no matter what horses try to do, he just doesn't seem to let them by. The winner of the last two, uh, two back, one on turf, and the Kitten's Joy, which we've talked about numerous times on the stakes preview. And then last time out, was able to hold off a horse I know you like a lot in Catholic Boy. And winning that race looked like he was going to get past them about mid stretch and was able to hang on. Very gritty, has one on turf, has one on synthetic, has one on a wet surface, has one on a dirt surface. Really has done nothing wrong. To me, the only problem is the race dynamics. I think the number eight, World of Trouble, who's also speedy, is going to give this horse fits. Yeah, and rarely do you see two horses with the speed just hang on wire the wire. I mean, we saw it uh, a couple times, but you know, it's really tough for those for horses to do that nowadays, two speed horses to hang on. So it's going to be interesting to see which one falls back and which one keeps riding riding strong, either World of Trouble or Flame Away. So uh, I agree with you there. I think this is a little bit more speed than the horse saw uh, last time out here at Tampa Bay. The number six and the number seven are enticed in free drop Billy, and we talked about them in the Gotham. They're going to go to the Gotham. They won't, uh, they won't run here in this spot, so we'll bypass them about talking about them in this spot. We'll, we'll go to the number eight, World of Trouble, going out for Jason Service, five to one on the warring line. You get a Ryder Tease Jr. to ship in and ride this horse. Last time out was ultra impressive, winning the Pasco down at Tampa Bay, a seven furlong stakes event down there. Won by 13 and three quarters, which is almost impossible to win by going seven furlongs. 
Uh, got a 97 buyer, went 121 and two for the seven furlongs. This horse is unbelievable when he's on his game. Is gonna have to face the likes of Flame Away on the lead, but is eligible to take him wire to wire. Yeah, this this is the horse that I think is is a ginormous play at five to one. Beat he hate me, who I know you liked uh, in a couple stakes during the preview. Um, so I think this is a very interesting horse. You get a Rod Ortiz up with, with service, and he's done nothing wrong at this meet. He's only had two starts. He's won one, came in second the other. Uh, I think this is a ginormous play at 5-1 to one with a ton of speed. Number nine is Untamed Domain going out for Grand Motion. You get Jose Ortiz to ship in and ride on this horse. Very interesting. 6-1 to one on the morning line, a horse that's only run on turf. And we've talked about this horse numerous times. I know you and I both like this horse raced in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf against Mendelssohn, finished second in that event at Del Mar. Before that, had one up at Woodbine in the grade two summer. This horse comes from off the pace, needs some speed. I don't think the turf to the dirt is gonna to be too much of a concern. It's out of Animal Kingdom, and we saw Animal Kingdom win the Kentucky Derby, win the Dubai World Cup. I think the change to the surfaces isn't gonna be a problem. And if there's a lot of pace in there, if World of Trouble and Flame Away kind of get into a little bit of a tussle going down the back stretch. I don't see why Untamed Domain couldn't be a huge player in here at 6-1. to one. And the, the added benefit of Jose Ortiz being aboard. Yeah, and you get Jose to come over, as you said, uh, and it's raced against some solid horses. And, you know, it's raced against Catholic Boy, the Breeders' Cup, Mendelssohn, uh, and, and has won a grade two event at Woodmine. I don't think that the surface switch is, is an issue at all. Uh, going turf to dirt, motions winning 22% of his clips, and the horse has been working fine on the dirt at Tampa Bay, and they were aiming at this this race since it raced at Dania Beach. So I wish the best of luck to West Point and, and Jose and all the connections there. Uh, I think this is an interesting play, especially the pace is going to be hot, and this is what the horse likes to close into. Number 10 is Quip going out for Rudolph Brissett. Laurent Giroux aboard, 20 to 1 on the morning line. A winner of the first two, broke the main in impressively at Churchill Downs, then faced winners for the first time at Keeneland in a one other than allowance race. That was stretching out to the mile on the 16th, was able to win super impressively by six and a half. Then tried the big boys in the grade two Kentucky Jockey Club against Enticed, Tis Mischief, and promise, Promises Fulfilled. Finished seventh, beat an eight, but to me, didn't break well, got steadied in the race. I don't think it was the best trip uh, for this horse, and I think it's going to be more forwardly placed in here. At 20-1, it's appealing, and Florent Roux has been aboard for all three and gets back aboard, I think is an interesting long shot. Yeah, I think it's an interesting long shot, too. And, uh, too, and you know, I say it every time there's a Windstar horse in, I love Benton Windstar, and I love Benton Windstar when they're a big price because they always come up to show, uh, and they always come up to race big. Uh, and I think this is... This is a nice long shot play here. I, I think all the connections, Florent Giroux coming over, nice meet for the connections and the trainer, been working fine, had a nice work uh, earlier in the month, I think, that, and the layoff. I think the layoff's a big play here too. So I agree with, with you, it's, it's an interesting horse. Number 11 is Caloric, going out for Michelle Winters, 50 to one on the morning line. A winner of the last two, but it's been against much weaker, won the maiden race against meaning claiming 25s and then faced claiming 16s last time out to get the job done, going to mile distance. Does stretch out slightly, has speed, but it's gonna run into the likes of World of Trouble and Flame Away. I just think it's a huge class test. Maybe, possibly a chance for a, the fourth spot to fill out the Supers, but I still think that's a long shot just to get in there. Yeah, especially from the outside post, because you got speed with with the wind star, the 10 horse, Florent Giroux, uh, and you got speed with World of Trouble. And without the six and the seven in the race, free drop, Billion and Enticed, all the speeds to the outside, except for a couple uh, exceptions, um, like Vino is gonna go in flame away. So I, I just think it's a little, little too much for this horse right now. I think one day can step up to this grade two event, to these graded stakes events, but definitely a big class test here today. All right, pick time here in the grade two South Tampa Bay Derby. I went World of Trouble on top. I think this horse is razor sharp. Uh, I, I think Arado T is coming to ride this horse. is a big play. Looked absolutely phenomenal last time out. The stretch out should not be an, an issue at all. Uh, and then I put Untamed Domain in the mix. I think Flame Oy is going to run a big race. I have this horse in the mix as well. Uh, Vino Rizzo to complete some supers. But a long shot I, I think is very interesting. Uh, I think Tis Mischief and 
uh, quip. They're 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 interesting interesting long shots here. Yeah, I'm actually gonna stick with a horse I like a lot. I don't think we've seen the best of him. I touched upon a little bit earlier was Vino Rosso. I think blinkers going on is exactly what this horse needs to do. Todd Pletcher has been unbelievable down at Tampa Bay. I think this horse has a huge shot to win with Johnny V aboard. Have him on top underneath his mischief, who I know you like as a long shot play. I have that horse second. I think can revert back to. Uh, that grade two event at Churchill Downs. And even last time out, I thought it was an okay third. I just think ran into a huge effort from Audible. I think the eight to one is very generous. And then also Untamed Domain from going from turf to dirt. I think this horse is very intriguing out of Animal Kingdom. I think it's going to be able to handle the surface and is definitely eligible to, to improve with Jose Ortiz aboard. And then my long shot play is going to be quick. I think at 20 to one with Florence Rue aboard, I think this horse, if it reverts back to any of those first two performances, I think we'll get a much better trip stocking on the outside, and you can see a nice price with number 10 equip in here. I'll take a stand against Flame Away. I just think your horse on top, World of Trouble, is going to give that horse a big time test going down the back stretch, and they may duel themselves into defeat. All right, that was our look at the races at Aqueduct and Tampa Bay. When we come back, we'll take a look at the huge card at Santa Anita. In a recent study of some of the top online wagering sites, Capital OTB won big in total player rewards, far surpassing some of the best-known wagering sites in America. While other rewards programs simply offer you points redeemable for gift cards, Capital OTB's rebates are paid to you in actual cash. Plus, Capital OTB gives you full and immediate access to your money. So if all you're getting now are points and gift cards, join Capital OTB Player Rewards today and get cash back. Visit CapitalOTBBet.com and sign up today preview for this upcoming weekend just talked about two of the three derby preps for the weekend we'll take a look at the huge card at Santa Anita we'll talk about three grade one events and then also the San Felipe which is probably the featured uh, derby prep of the weekend with the big clash of McKenzie and Bolte Oro but we'll start out with race number four on Saturday at Santa Anita it's the grade one triple bend $400,000 purse for four-year-olds and up it's a nice six horse field that will be excuse me reduced down to five with the scratch of number three giant expectations who was dual entered he'll actually go on the Santa Anita handicap but we'll start out with number one Edward Edwards going left going out for John Sadler five to two on the morning line last time out was able to win impressively in a stakes at Santa Anita going six furlongs came from just off the pace to win going away by six lengths Got a 102 buyer, two back, lost to City of Light, who we'll touch upon a little bit later, and is the morning line favorite by two lengths. I think this horse is razor sharp right now. I think the race dynamics are going to fall right into uh, this horse's wheelhouse, and if the five and the six get into a little bit of a tussle, I think the number one, Edwards going left, is a huge play in here. Yeah, I think this horse is a ginormous play here. I think the, the scratch of giant expectations uh, is, is also a... Uh, interesting play here uh, but I, I agree really balanced on paper we saw this horse wire the field last time loves the sand any the surface as well John Sadler's had a phenomenal meet uh, I think this is a serious play here and looked ultra impressive last time out in a stakes race number two is horse greedy going out for Brian corner you get Stuart Elliott aboard 20 to 1 on the morning line tried to turf two back going six and a half downhill at Santa Anita didn't do much running last time out raced at seven furlongs on the dirt surface and a one other than optional claimer came from just off the pace to get up and win by three quarters of a length i think it's just a touch below the horses in here if there is a pass a pace battle in here may be able to fill out the tries and supers but i think the two needs a lot to go right on uh, saturday a big test here you know ran into grade one malibu dropped down was 10 to 1 dropped down again i had won that race so you know, we're, the connections must have been satisfied with that win. Um, you get Stuart Elliott to stay, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I think it's just a little touch below the rest of the uh, the rest of this field. Number three, Giant Expectations will be scratched out of this spot to go into the Santa Anita handicap. Uh, seems to be more in his wheelhouse, and we'll touch upon him a little bit later when we get to that race. Number four is Bobby Abu Dhabi, probably my favorite horse to say. Say that five times fast, that's Bobby not fun. <laughs> but uh, Bobby Abu Dhabi, the number four. Peter Miller, who's winning 23% so far at Santa Anita, 8-1 to one on the morning line. You get Victor Espinoza aboard. A winner last time out, a two other than optional claimer. That was back in December. Is coming off of a little bit of a layoff. 
but has to face the likes of some nice horses. Faced Mastery before he had to get retired. Mastery was unbelievable back uh, back then, and then two back faced recruiting ready and three rules who I think are very nice horses that was at Pimlico I think off the layoff is a little bit of a concern but if there's some pace I think this horse is definitely in the mix hey, again I think the scratch giant expectations this horse is now more in the mix not going to be eight to one anymore it's going to drop a couple a couple notches there um, Peter Miller's had a great meet out there as well you get Victor Espinosa aboard uh, with a lot of speed on this horse and I agree I think this is an interesting play for Bobby Abu Dhabi um, and I'm, I'm excited to see how Victor plays this horse. Is the horse going to take a stalking role? Is this horse going to test the speed, uh, the other speed in this race? Number five is City of Light going off from Mike McCarthy. You get Drayden Van Dyke aboard, the 9-5 to five morning line favorite last time out, raced and won in the grade one Malibu. Going wire to wire, beating the number one Edwards going left. Thought that was a real solid performance, got a 102 buyer. The, the last two losses, two and three back, were both second place finishes, both the really nice horses in Dabster and American Eyes. And uh, I think this horse is eligible to try to take the lead. To me, the only question is, and we haven't talked about it yet, is the number six, Captain Scotty. I think this horse is gonna try to go right with the number five, and there's a possibility that they could get into a big, huge speed duel. Yeah, it's gonna be a big speed duel. I think it is, you know, th this horse has been working razor sharp as well since that December victory. Just tons and bullet after bullet after bullet after bullet, a four out of 34. Um, you know, I, this horse has is, is the speed of the speed. Captain Society is going to go with this horse, though, which is just a little concerning. No one even pressed the horse last time out as soon as they left the gate. Um, but definitely it is the horse to beat in this race. Number six is Captain Scotty going off for Peter Miller. Again, we already touched upon him. He's got the number four in here and also the number six. Javier Castellano's aboard. He's he's here on Saturday to ride Bolt de Oro. And uh, I think, uh, you know, this horse has done nothing wrong. Two for two lifetime. Broke the main and very impressively at Laurel. Then got switched and brought out to the West Coast for Peter Miller. The horse won a one other than an optional claimer on January 26th. Wire to wire event winning by five and a half. I think this horse is razor sharp right now. Uh, the works have been pretty solid. Is going to have to run into a really nice sprinter in City of Light. I think going to be a huge pace presence with the five. And uh, one to use in the mix. Just not sure how the race dynamic set up for him. Yeah, that's just a big question mark here. What, how is this race going to set up for him? Javier, he's going to have the horse in a nice spot. Peter Miller wants the horse to go. He's going to go, and that's just going to set things up for Bobby Abu Dhabi. So uh, Peter Miller is going to figure all this out with his horses, what he thinks the best would be for these horses, but uh, I, I'm going to be interested to see what Javier does. All right, it's a short five horse field. Who do you like here in the grade one triple bend? Edwards going last I have on top. I think this horse is, is razor sharp after last time out. Uh, ran huge in the Malibu uh, and seems to love the Santa Anita surface. So I have that horse on top. Uh, I, I put City of Light underneath as well. Uh, and I think Bobby Abu Dhabi is, is a horse to complete some trifectas as well. Yeah, I, I'm exactly with you. I like Edwards going left. I think last time out was a real nice effort. I know this horse has to make up two lengths off that two-back race where he did lose to City of Light. I just think race dynamics, this horse is going to sit the pocket. Tyler Bates knows he's got to stay close to both the five and the number six in here. I think he will, and then try to get the jump in him about mid-stretch. I think he may be able to get the job done underneath number five, City of Light. Razor sharp right now off that 102 buyer. I just think race dynamics. I think the five and the six are going to go at it. And then I have the six underneath. I think the four is probably the most likely uh, trifecta play to use in there over the six. I think the six on the step up in class facing the likes of the intensity he's going to see from City of Light, I think. Um, the four is a nice long shot play, Bobby Abu Dhabi. So I think it's a very competitive race. We'll, set, we'll both side with the one in here in the grade one triple bend. Also take a look at the race number five on Saturday. It's the Frank Kilroy grade one event. $400,000 of the purse. It's for four year olds and upward. And there are a lot of notable names in here. We'll start out with number one, Free Rose. Going out for Richard Boltis, 21 on the morning line. You get Kent DeSormo Award, and last time race in a grade two event, finished fourth, beaten four and a quarter to a nice horse, and it, it's in the post. To me, it just has a repeat of a bunch of fourth, fifth place performances. You really have to go back to 20 to 16 when this horse was razor sharp. Maybe the best days are beyond this horse, but possibly a horse to use in the exa exotics. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think Free Rose is just... I, I agree. I think the better days are behind this horse. Just a bunch of fours, a bunch of six. And this horse is running 94 buyers. So, I mean, you can't, you know, 
how much better is this horse going to do than the 94 buyer? It's done it better three or four times throughout the career and also ran fourth. Uh, did win a couple grade twos, as you said, in 2016. I just think it's over its time here. Uh, but consistently runs in fourth and is at a big price. So super factors with this horse. And number two is Bowie's Hero going out for Phil D'Amato. You get Corey Nakatani aboard, 6-1 to one on the morning line. Last time out, closed from fourth, nine lengths off of it to finish second, beating a half length to Om, um, who we'll talk about. Also beat next shares in here, who we'll talk about right after this horse. I thought that was a solid performance, got a 98 buyer. If you go to the two-back race at Santa Anita, raced in a grade two event, came from just off of it to win by a half length, beating a nice horse in Croy and big score, I think. It's definitely a, a horse that fits perfectly in this spot. Race dynamics, we'll see who goes to the lead. I think Om's going to go. You'll see World Approval, who we'll touch upon, is the morning line favorite that everybody knows about. Uh, we'll see where Bowie's hero kind of sits in the mix, but it's definitely a player at 6-1. to one. Yeah, and that was an interesting race last time out in the Thunder Road, and a lot of familiar company here uh, for Bowie's hero. Next, sh next shares were in there, was in that race. Om was in that race. So... If you like any of those horses, you got to take a look at this horse because this horse lost by half a length and really ran it at a ginormous race. Number three is next shares going out for Richard Boltis. Another one he has trained in this event. You get Rajiv Mirage aboard. Eight to one on the morning line. Last time out, raced in that grade three Thunder Road. Close off the pace, unbelievable kick. Was 16 lengths back. Close to finish third, being in a half length. They did go quick fractions that day. Om was able to hang on and win that race up front. Boys Hero was charging, and also number three, next shares, who we're talking about right now, was charging as well. The horse has been in really good form. Three and four back, won an allowance race and an optional claimer at Aqueduct. Switched to the Santa Anita circuit, two back, finished second, and a nice third last time up. I don't see why this horse can't run another big race in this event. Yeah, and as I just said, like Bowie's here, you got you got to like next shares. And Rajiv, he had a actually a, a very nice meet in California. Um, this horse raced against Pee Wee Reese, came in second to that horse with a nice closing effort. Pee Wee Reese is, is a phenomenal horse out there. Lost to Mr. Cub earlier on in the career. Mr. Cub's doing big things down in South Florida. So this horse has raced against some quality horses here. Uh, and you get Rajiv on the closer. Rajiv's had a nice meet. Uh, that that's lead eight to one. Why not take a shot here? Number four is Syntax going out for Phil D'Amato, another Phil D'Amato trainee. 15 to 1 on the morning line, a horse that hasn't been seen since May of 2017 is coming off of a very long layoff, but the races that this horse ran were pretty good. Back-to-back uh, -back second place performances, two and three back. The last race this horse ran was in the grade two event at Santa Anita against Ashley Love Sugar and Frank Conversation, who were both very nice horses. And, and Syntax finished third being a half length to him. So off the long layoff is definitely a concern. 15 to one is very intriguing though because this horse has run some decent races to get in the mix. Yeah, and the one thing that I think is concerning, you're not getting Raphael in there anymore. Bayrano's not getting the mount today. Uh, but the horse is, does have a lot of closing speed and he's working like a closing speed. Uh, I agree, I, it's just a little bit long of a layoff to come back. Against World Approval, who we haven't even touched upon yet, that's just a lot to ask. Number five is World Approval going out for Marquesi, Flavri and Prada board. And four to five on the morning line, interesting, because Johnny V's been aboard for the last three. Obviously, he can't chip out to run on this horse, and it's going to be interesting to see what Flavian can do with this horse. A winner of four in a row, obviously, needs no introduction. Uh, won the Breeders' Cup mile very impressively back in November at Del Mar, beating Lancaster Bomber. This horse is just was unbelievable in the second half of 2017. We've talked about how we got to see him in person up at uh, Woodbine and uh, three for three at the distance. Has no problem shipping out to the West Coast. Did it going out to Del Mar. To me though, I I'm just not sure. Was originally planned to go to Dubai and then they switched the tactics. We watched last race at Tampa Bay in the grade three Tampa Bay. I thought it was a very workmanlike performance. I think the horse did what he had to do, but really wasn't I, you know, impressive to me. Uh, what are your thoughts on world approval? Yeah, it, you know, wasn't impressive to the eye, but the horse did win a grade three event and, you know, it's made over $3 million for Mark Cassie. But, you know, you don't have Johnny V on. That's, people are going to be concerned about that. But you get Flavia Pratt aboard. And, and if you don't follow West Coast Racing, there's two kids out there, Evan Roman, or Romine, and Flavian Pratt. They are the West Coast Jose and Arad Ortiz. They are phenomenal riders. Uh, they run huge and big time races. So I don't think that's a ginormous issue if that's your issue. You're not having Johnny V. You have Flavian Pratt aboard, but I agree. Um, 
the 105 buyer win my half a life did not really look like a, a won the three shot or won the five shot or whatever he was in that Tampa Bay race but ever since the four star Dave this horse is just running consistent uh, 105 108 buyers so I think it's gonna be tough to beat uh, you get Flavio on board that's not an issue at all uh, definitely is going to be the, the favorite in this race and deserves to be. Number six is what of you going out for Ken Black. Tyler Bay's aboard 15 to 1 on the morning line. Last time out finished six beating eight lengths in the grade three Daytona on February 24th. The last real good race for this horse was three back. Got a 102 buyer won a stakes race here at Santa Anita. To me it's just hot and cold. There's definitely a pace presence in here. You'll probably see the six go with number seven Om who avert tactics and uh, one out going wire to wire last time out so you'll see number six what of you on the lead i'm just not sure if this horse will be able to hang on but is a horse for the course six wins over the surface at san anito in 10 life or 12 lifetime starts excuse me yeah you know nine times in 12 starts is intriguing as well i think a horse that maybe can can hit get a little piece here it's gonna make the front runners really earn it today he's got a lot of speed here uh but i, I think it's just a little touch below and we saw that last time out in the daytona Number seven is Om um, going out for Dan Hendricks. You got Mike Smith aboard, and it's very interesting. He's never ridden this horse before. Uh, definitely interesting to see him on. Last time out, Om um, won the Grade Three Thunder Road, beating Bowie's Hero and Neck Shares, who we talked about a little bit earlier. I thought that was a super performance because they went very fast for the mile distance. He was able to hang on that day, and I think. Is another pace presence in here. I like the fact that this horse is outside of what of you, so Mike Smith can kind of figure out what he wants to do going into the first turn. But is definitely a player in here at five to one. Yeah, this is a horse I think is going to make it interesting here. I think the the stalking ability can can wire this field. If no one goes to this horse and this horse gets to the lead, it's going to be very tough to catch even for one approval. This horse can close. We've seen this horse close uh, four or five races back. Really nice closing effort in a grade three event. So Mike Smith's going to know what to do. He's going to pick his spots with this horse. Five and one is very intriguing underneath. Number eight is Channel Maker going out for Billy Mott. You got Javier Castellano aboard. Five to one on the morning line. Last time out, raced in the grade one Gulfstream Park turf. Finished fifth, beating two lengths to heart to heart. Uh, remember going over that race with you, Sully. And I thought that was an okay performance. You go two back, finish second, beating a length to Motown in a grade one Hollywood uh, Derby and I, I thought that was again another solid effort. The, the fact is that the horse is two for 14 lifetime as far as wins go. The horse runs in the money half the time and uh, to me just always gets bet down a little bit too much and I'm just not sure if the horse will be able to get there again. The horse definitely does get bet down a little bit too much. I remember watching that race against Heart to Heart. Set, he was the second choice seven to two and then finally went off at six to one. Uh, but I think Javier, you get, he ran a nice race with Javier two back uh, in a grade one event at Del Mar. So I think the outside stall is just the one thing the horse doesn't like. We saw that last time at the GP uh, turf. We saw it early on in the career, had the outside stall, ran an, an okay second. But I, I, you know, I can't play this horse on top. But definitely at 5-1, I don't think we'll stay at 5-1. I think we'll be extremely over pet. But I think this horse wins a big, big race today. All right, pick time in the uh, fifth race at Santa Anita, the grade one, uh, Frank Kilroy. Yeah, world approval on top for me. It's just the horse is just razor sharp. And if you beat this horse, tip the cap to you. And, uh, you know, I think Flavian and Mark Hansi are just going to have a, a very nice day. Uh, I think Channel Maker runs a big race with Javier. Uh, and I think Bowie's hero and Om um, as well. I think Om's um a big play uh, at a nice price at 5-1 and, and Bowie's hero as well at 6-1 with Corey Nakatani. Yeah, I mean, listen, no, no one's going to be shocked if World Approval wins five in a row and he's been unbelievable. And buyers-wise, he's tops among any in here. But to me, I just, the, the last race was a little bit concerning. I know he won the race, but Forge and Fireway are nice horses. They're not great horses. And uh, you know, this that was to start the six-year-old campaign. I don't know. Maybe I just try to look elsewhere. I like number seven. Um, I think last performance was very sharp. I think uh, you know if this horse can get to the lead or right off with number six. What of you? I think Mike Smith obviously knows what he's doing and uh, could work out a trip and just try to hang on with the fast closing world approval. He'll probably sitting right, be sitting right off of both of them. So uh, I'll just take a shot with Om um, at five to one underneath world approval. Uh, searching for five in a row and has been unbelievable. 
and uh, I'll take a look look at number two Bowie's hero as well. The six to six to one morning line is intriguing. Second place performance last time out, and then two back, one a Grade Two event in Santa Anita, and then my long shot play is next year's horse closed tremendously last time. Uh, Sixteen lengths closed, just get beaten a half length. I think the faster the the better for number three next shares who's at the eight to one morning line price all right that was a look at two of the four that we'll take a look at at san anita we come back we'll take a look at probably the big one on the san anita card and that's the grade two san felipe and we'll also take a look at the grade one san anita handicap so stay tuned uh, we're at 45 right now. Sign up today for Capital OTB's Handicapping Series and plan your trip to Las Vegas. We are through four of the six races so far. We'll take a look at the big one at San Anita on, on Saturday. It's the race number six on the card. It's a grade two event. It's San Felipe. $400,000 is the purse for three-year-olds. And this is the big matchup between Volte Oro and McKenzie. We'll start out in numerical order with number one, Volte Oro. Going out for Mick Ruiz. Javier Castellano ships in to ride this horse. Two to one on the morning line is the second choice to McKenzie, who's the eight to five morning line favorite. Last time out, finished third, beaten five and a quarter. Two good magic in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Was odds on that day. To me, got the worst trip, and I talked about it last week. Got the worst trip in all of the Breeders' Cup races. Uh, didn't break very well, and that's really the crutch to Volteoro. When he gets out there and he's able to get into the clear and he's able to stride the way he wants to, uh, I, he's a huge and, and dynamite horse to, to watch and he's been unbelievable. Uh, two back, one by seven and three quarters, getting a 103 buyer. He's been working very sharp. The only problem is he has to break well. He's been known not to break well and that's kind of been the crutch that he's always had in his wheelhouse. What are your thoughts on number one Volteoro? Yeah, I agree with everything you said. This horse needs to break well, but the one thing that is just, just jaw-dropping looking at this, just the last word posted, an absolute bullet of a bullet, a 1 out of 93, a 46 and 2, 4 furlongs, so that this horse is just going to go. And if this horse goes, it's going to be tough for anyone to catch this horse. I absolutely agree. Javier's got to get this horse out and... And as you said, the Breeders' Cup, and he ran an okay race at the Breeders' Cup, but it really was an awful trip, and not a great race at all. Bowel to start was wide, as wide as you can be as well. So uh, I agree. Just and just look start. at his four races, the the, the lines, and you you see it in person is off a bit slow, off a bit slow, and then bobbled to start. He and he did it in his one of his works. He did it in the two back work on February 26th. It was a real solid time of 112 for six furlongs. But he bobbled out of the gate again, so he's got to fix that. But if he can, and Javier Castellano aboard, I think the sky's the limit for Volteoro. I think he's a huge play in here. Number two is Lombo. Going off for Michael Pender. You get Rafael Bejarano aboard, 8-1 to one on the morning line. A winner of the last two. Broke the maiden two back. Last time out, won the grade three. Robert Lewis beating the likes of Ayakara, who we'll talk about a little bit later on. Thought those were pretty nice performances. If you just look at buyers alone, is a little bit below that, but nonetheless, the searching for three in a row will be a little bit of a pace presence. What are your thoughts with number two, Lombo? Yeah, I liked this horse last time out at a nice price. I think not having Flavian aboard, I think that's just a little, little tough for this horse here. But Flavian goes to the West Point thoroughbred horse, but I think this horse can handle this distance. We did see it last time out. The horse could have won by more than two lengths if it wanted to. Uh, I think it's a very interesting 8-1, to one, but I agree. Buyer-wise and class-wise, just a touch below. Number three is Ayakara going out for Keith DeSormer. You get Kent DeSormer aboard. 8-1 to one on the morning line. Last time out, finished second, beating two lengths. Two Lombo, who we just talked about. Thought that was an okay performance. To me, as a stone-cold closer, is going to need a lot of speed. Mackenzie is forwardly placed. You're also going to see speed from Lombo. Uh, Bolt de Oro will be there. So, you know, the six we haven't talked about, Kalaxman as well. If for some reason there's a lot of pace, I don't see why Ayakara couldn't get a piece in here. Yeah, if there's a lot of pace, this, this is when the, it's very interesting in San Diego. These horses come out of nowhere. They zoom in on the top two horses. You see this horse just flying out in the middle of your screen. So I definitely could see that. If the pace is hot, uh, watch out for number three. 
Number four is McKenzie going out for Bob Baffert. Mike Smith aboard eight to five on the morning line. Your morning line favorite. Last time out, won the grade three sham, beat the likes of My Boy Jack, and should only be flattered now because we've seen My Boy Jack come back and run very impressively at Oakland. Uh, two back, finished second to Salamini, but was put up um, and still, it's still regard as well. And you know, it's still regard we saw down at fairgrounds. This horse has been razor sharp, has faced very good quality. The works have been quite solid. The last two works have been both seven furlong works, which you like to see the fitness going in from Bob Baffert. I think is razor sharp right now, and Mackenzie's definitely a major player in here. Yeah, this horse is going to be ready to go, and I just. You know, you can put this horse on the lead. You can put this horse in the stalking roll, and the horse has made up a lot of lengths there. Did have a defeat, but place first through the disqualification. I thought I got away with one there. But as you said, really looked impressive last time out, beating my boy Jack. And my boy Jack down in Oakland looked phenomenal. So that should just flatter this horse and Bob Baffert. Number five is a killer going out for Simon Callahan. Martin Bertrozo aboard 15-1 to 1 on the morning line. Won the maiden breaker last time out. Going a mile and 16th here at Santa Anita. I thought it was an okay performance. Got it, went wire to wire. And to me, race dynamics wise, kind of doesn't set up quite well for him. I think it's going to have to revert back to being a little bit off of the pace. But nonetheless, facing winners for the first time. 15 to 1 is intriguing, but this is a huge class test. Ginormous class test. You're going against, you know, the winner of the top two ranked yeah. horses in the Kentucky in Derby Poll. Yeah. So, yeah. And. These horses, other horses have raced in graded stakes and stage races as well. Ginormous class test here, but uh, we'll see how this horse does with some speed. Could get interesting. Number six is Kalaxman. Going out for Vladimir Sarin, 30 to 1 on the morning line. Last time out, raced at Golden Gate in a $100,000 stakes race. Took the lead and faded to finish eighth that day. Two back raced at Del Mar on the turf and won that race winning the maiden breaker and to me it's just one of those horses that is going to try one and one thing only try go out and get the lead and try to hang on i'm just not sure if that's going to happen yeah as you said you know i don't think it's going to happen either it's just a ton of speed here for this horse couldn't hang on last time out goes to the mile and a 16 from a mile and an eight at golden gate maybe switching off the, the surface might help but uh yeah, as you said, I, I just really can't see this horse hanging on, especially first time going on to the fast track. Uh, second time, excuse me, on a fast track since last October. That's a lot to ask. Number seven is Peace going out for Richard Mandela. Drayden Van Dyke aboard 15 to 1 on the morning line. Blinkers come off of this horse. We tried Blinkers last time out, and the Blinkers didn't work at all. The horse finished fifth, beating eight and a quarter. Was one of the favorites that day in the grade three, Robert Lewis. And... I thought that was a real poor performance. If you go back to the maiden breaker, though, really was sharp. Got a 76 buyer, uh, went the mile and 16th distance, has faced the likes of Shiver Me Timbers and faced in still regard and Moreno, who we talked about as horses that are also on the trail as well. To me, if the blinker's coming off, we can get this horse to run one of those two or three back performances. I think it's a nice player at a big price. Yeah, you take the blinkers back on off, which is, should help. And the one thing is just Richard Mandel is over six with his blinkers off, but I, I do. I think Peace is a nice player. I remember you liked Peace against Lon in the Lombo race last time out. Went off a two to one. Now this horse is fifteen to one. I just think it wasn't his day there. Wide turns, really didn't have any kick left in him. Something we have not seen from this horse really throughout the career. So I, I, I agree. I think fifteen to one is very interesting for Peace. Number eight is Kanthaka going out for Jerry Hollandor for Flavia and Prada board four to one on the morning line. A winner of the last two, looking for three in a row. Won the maiden breaker two back impressively. Got in a 78 buyer. Last time out, closed a ton to get up and win by three and a quarter. Going away against the likes of Nero, who's a nice horse. Got a 99 buyer that day. Did close into some really quick fractions, which only helped Kanthaka in that race. But again, I think is another horse that's going to be sitting right off of the top two, McKenzie and Bolt de Oro. And if those two kind of get into a tussle early on, May soften it up for Kanthaka's closing kick. Yeah, and as you said, the closing kick is one thing that we're all obviously going to look out for. We saw that. Horses have been working pretty well for, for a closer, and it's 6 out of 46. The one big question mark is, is can this horse stretch out? Um, and as we have seen, these horses have been successful sprinting in stage races. We saw it at the Fountain of Youth, strike power stretching out, ran a huge race. Uh, I think this horse to stretch out is really not going to be a big deal. Uh, and you have Flavian Prada board, which is nice.
All right. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I know you've been a McKenzie fan, so yeah, I'm I, guessing. I, I, I'm McKenzie. guessing right now that you're a McKenzie fan. I went McKenzie on top. I think this horse is just razor sharp. If Mike Smith can do anything you want it to, close, stalk, sprint. I don't think it's going to sprint because there's other speed in this race. Bolt Oro is one of those speed horses, but can't get too far behind Bolt Oro. I think Lombo runs another big race with Rafael Bejarano and Bolt Oro in the mix. Uh, long shot, I, I think the, the Sormo brothers. Got it at 8-1. to one. I think this is a horse to watch out with a closing kick late in that race to get a piece of the purse money. Yeah, I'm going to stick with both there. I've been a huge fan. I know last time out, that third place performance looks bad on paper, but to be honest, I thought that was a winning performance finishing third. Uh, he broke slow, had to go about eight wide around both turns. Corey Nakatani had a dreadful trip that day. I think he's going to... Uh, I think you're going to see a much better trip under Javier Castellano. I think the works have been sharp. The horse has to break well, has to kind of get out there and, and get out in the center of the track. So it's going to be interesting to see if Javier can do that, get this horse out into a free reeling stride. And if this horse can, I think he's going to be really tough to beat. Underneath, I thought Kanthaka is a horse that's going to stretch out, like you said, and I, I think can do so. Uh, with a nice closing kick last time in the grade two, San Vicente. I think is another player, and you're going to get a nice price. And then underneath number four, McKenzie, your top choice. Bob Baffert trainee, Mike Smith aboard, has been training very well, has done nothing wrong in the last couple races. Uh, but to me, I just uh, has been facing some short fields, five and six horse fields. I'm just not sure if this horse has got the real class test yet. He's going to get it on Saturday with the likes of this field. We'll see where McKenzie fits in here. And then my long shot play is Peace. I like Peace at 15 to 1. Last time out was one of the favorites in the grade 3 event. Did no running. That was a blinkers on. Blinkers come off on Saturday. And I think the, the source will run back to those forms two and three back. So very interesting with Peace at 15 to 1. All right, that was our look at the grade two San Felipe. We'll take a look at another feature on Saturday's card at Santa Anita. Race number 10, it's the grade one Santa Anita handicap. $600,000 purse, it's for four year olds and upward. They're going a mile and a quarter. Number one is top of the game. Going out for Vladimir Saren, you get Kent DeSor tomorrow aboard. 10 to one on the morning line. Horse raced in the last two in grade two events. 10th place performance, two back and last time out. Showed speed and finished fifth, beating five lengths. That was going a mile and eighth on the dirt. To me, just needs to revert back to that early 2017 form where this horse was razor sharp, albeit that was an optional claimer company uh, and one stakes race at Santa Anita. But ever since this horse has got up into the grade two and grade three events, has been able to show what he's going to do. Uh, grade one event seems a little bit tough for this horse. Yeah, I think it's just a very interesting horse here. You get Ken aboard, really balanced, and you know it's going to be tough to jump up to this Santa Anita handicap. It, it is a very tough grade one event. I thought it looked okay last time out, but I just think it's a little bit overmatched today. But if you do look at the Santa Anita stats go, five starts, and he's won four times, so he's definitely a horse for the course over the Santa Anita surface. So we'll see what we get from the number one top of the game. Number two is Prime Attraction, going out for James Cassidy, Tiago Pereira aboard, 8-1 to one on the morning line. Last time out, finished second, being a length and three quarters in the grade two, San Pasquale. To Accelerate, who we'll talk about a little bit later on, thought that was a pretty good performance. Uh, the only real bad performance in the last four starts was that two-back race in the grade two, San Antonio, uh, where the horse uh, bobbled at the start. So if you run a line through that last race, this horse has been in very good form, and 8-1 to one is very appealing. Yeah, it definitely is an appealing price and definitely got to put it next through that San Antonio um, two races back. But came back in San Pasquale, ran okay, I thought. Very impressive second there uh, to accelerate, running against familiar company once again. Uh, he's raced against some, some solid horses and collected and, uh, and Cupid. So this horse, the one big iffy for me here, the one big thing that's throwing me off, is the three times the money in eight starts, and the horse has been close. A lot of forts there, uh, a lot of fifths, this and fifths. So uh, that's just the one thing keeping me away. Number three is Curlin Road going off for Doug O'Neill. Tyler Bays aboard, 12 to 1 on the morning line. Last time out, raced in the grade one Pacific Classic against Collected, Arrogate, Accelerate of No. That was back in August of 2017, though, so this horse is coming off of a long layoff. That fourth was an okay performance. Two and three back were both solid performances, winning both of those, getting a 94 buyer two back in a grade three event. To me, just off the layoff is the big concern. Uh, Doug O'Neill has okay stats when it comes to that, but 
Uh, 12 to 1 is appealing. If this horse can run to any of those last three races, possibly an exotics play? Yeah, I think this is a big exotics play here. And I, I fought against Collected last time out. Uh, beat Hard Aces too back. And raced okay against, and, you know, against Harrogate, who was up for Horse of the Year and looked unstoppable. Uh, just came back. And I thought fit in very nicely there at 30 to 1. Did everything you asked for this horse with Doug O'Neill. I think this is interesting at 12 to 1. Number four is Giant Expectations, who is dual entered. We'll go in this spot, it looks like, going out for Peter Ert and Corey Nakatani aboard 5 to 1 on the morning line. Raced in the Pegasus World Cup last time out at Gulfstream Park. Got the dreaded 12 hole going, the two turn distance there. I know Gary Stevens was high in him that day. Finished ninth, being 18, showed a little bit of speed, but was just really fading uh, throughout the race. If you go to the two-back race, was an upset winner in the grade to San Antonio against the likes of Collected. This horse, if you just look at the overall body of work, shows up in some random times. Two-back with that 106 buyer, five-back with the 101. To me, is one of those hot and cold horses, maybe hot and coming up into this race with some nice works. What do you think with the number four? Yeah, very nice works here for uh, Giant Expectations. and. Yeah, no, as you said, just really that was tough, tough draw there in the, in the Pegasus. So I think it's very interesting here. I, I think it's just a little bit overmatched again. I don't think can beat the likes of Accelerate again in this in this situation. Uh, I think the four hole might just be a little bit uh, of an issue as well. Number five is Opportunity going out for Bob Baffert, Flavia and Prada board. 7-2 on the morning line. Has not been seen since December of 2017, so it's coming off a little bit of a layoff. Did finish fourth in that grade two San Antonio behind John Expectations and Accelerate. A horse that just faced the likes of some really good quality, faced Arrogate, faced California Chrome a couple times, has run really solid in a lot of events. Uh, doesn't win too, too often, hasn't won in five starts, but off the layoff has done quite well. What are your thoughts with opportunity? Yeah, I think the layoff's gonna be a big play here. We saw a little bit of layoff from March to October, ran huge second there uh, from the Dubai World Cup. Took another layoff from November to February, uh, won that race. I think the layoff's just going to flatter this horse here with Lobby and Prada board. Number six is Fear the Cowboy, an interesting shipper coming in from Gulfstream Park. You get Javier Castellano aboard to team up. They were together two back in a winning performance in a grade three event down at Gulfstream. Last time did run in the Pegasus World Cup and came from off the pace to finish fourth, albeit a distant fourth, but we know Gunrunner and West Coast were clearly 1-2 that day. I thought that was a very good performance, outran the odds of 74-1 to 1 that day. I think just off that encouraging effort, they decided to ship out here west. You're getting the morning line favorite. I think the morning line is a little low on this horse, uh, but nonetheless, the horse is coming in oh, in very good form. I don't think this horse will go off as, uh, as the favorite in this race, but definitely coming off good form. Definitely belongs in this race after last time out. Definitely belongs in this race after two races back. I, I think this is a nice play here. I think we're going to get a better price than 3-1 to one as well. Number seven is Accelerate. Going out for John Sadler, you get Victor Espinosa aboard 5-2 to two on the morning line. Last time the winner of the grade two San Pasquale going a mile and an eighth. It is stretching out to the mile and a quarter. A little bit of a concern, but you know this horse has run well time and time again. Uh, the one last time out in the grade two event, finished second. Being three and a quarter, giant expectations two back. Has thrown in a couple hundred plus high buyers. You know, 110, four back, and five back out of 109, I think is a very logical morning line favorite. Uh, if you can repeat that last performance, I don't see why this horse can't win again. Yeah, definitely don't see why this horse can't win again. Uh, but that, I, I just think the grade one events just have not been fair to this horse. It went into the Breeders' Cup. Didn't do much running, lost the battle midway, great run there, came in ninth, a very distant ninth, uh, and then ran into a grade one, uh, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile in 2016, I, that was the best performance that horse has had in a grade one, and then has ran in some grade twos, did okay as well, I just think a five to two, I can't touch this horse on top. Number eight is Mutahij going out for Bob Baffert, Mike Smith aboard, four to one on the morning line, blinkers come off of this horse. The last time out raced at San Anita on February 3rd in the grade two San Pasquale against Accelerate and Prime Attraction. Showed speed that day, which is quite interesting. Uh, the horse had never shown speed before, uh, but faded that day to finish four or finish third, beating four and a quarter. Thought that was interesting on the change up in race dynamics. I think we're gonna see Mike Smith revert back uh, to coming from off the pace, which is the best and ideal uh, race strategy for Mutahij. And, if so, this horse has run some really nice races. 
uh, all the way through his career, the nice grade one or race and the Woodward back in September of 2016. And I think second off the layoff is going to help this horse. Things very interesting at four to one. Very interesting price here, four to one, as you said. Mike Smith's going to have this horse in a in a very solid spot. When you take the blinkers off, Bob Baffert's winning 46% of his mounts, which is unbelievable. So uh, I, I agree. I think Mutahij is just. Is, is a serious play here. I just don't like the outside post. That's the one reason I'm staying away. All right, pick time here in the grade one, San Anita Handicap. I like opportunity off the layoff. The horse seems to be doing extremely well, uh, working out. And the last two times the horse had a nice layoff, ran huge in, in some big races. So I have opportunity on top. Pure the Cowboy, I think, has a nice closing run with Javier. We saw that the last two starts. I think it's got to be tough for this horse to get up to win. I think the closing effort's there to get a piece of the purse money. Uh, I think, and then uh, Curlin Road, very interesting closer as well. Um, we saw that the last three starts, race against Collect and Narrowgate uh, in the Pacific. So I, I'm very interested to see how this horse does since we have not seen it since August. Normally we have similar thoughts, and we have like one or two horses possibly in the mix. We completely disagree <laughs> in this race. I saw it eight, four, and seven. One of us. I, used, I know exactly. One, no, you know it's going to be a combination. Like I'm going to yeah. finish second and right. third, and you're going to finish first and fourth. Um, <laughs> I like Mutahij in this spot. Uh, Bob Baffert. I think this horse is going to revert back to uh, the strategy that this horse has always done, coming from off the pace. And uh, Mike Smith of the board, I think, is only going to help this horse. Like you said, the good stats with blinkers coming off of Bob Baffert, I think, is going to be a nice play at somewhere around seven to two. And underneath that, number four, Giant Expectations. Last time out, got the dreadful post in the Pegasus World Cup. I think comes back to Santa Anita. Has done well here. That two-back race is really impressive. And five to one's intriguing. And then Accelerate underneath that winner last time on the grade two, San Pasqual. I think should like the mile and a quarter distance. And then my long shot play will be Prime Attraction in here. Eight to one on the morning line. You are going out for James Cassidy, Tiago Pereira aboard. Last time out, finished second, being a length and three quarters. I think will like to stretch out to the mile and a quarter. And to me, the eight to, eight to one is very intriguing. Like you said, one of us is going to be right, one of us is going to be wrong in this race. But we actually saw that race completely different. So uh, that was funny to see. So that was our look at the six races we took a look at on Saturday. Terrific day of racing all over the country. Uh, you have the, the grade three Gotham at in New York at Aqueduct. You have... Uh, tons of stakes races down at Tampa Bay, highlighted by the Tampa Bay Derby. And then also you have three grade one events at Santa Anita, along with the San Felipe, with the clash between Volte Oro and McKenzie. Uh, so uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week to talk about some more. Good luck on Saturday. Hopefully gave you some good thoughts and some things to ponder, but we'll see you next week.